Hello everybody, welcome to my next video and today I'm gonna continue on my previous video number 22. In this video I talked to you how USB kind of works and more on the HID part and how the human interface device part of the USB standard works. And we built a keyboard on our st 32 f 4 discovery board over here with its built-in OTG full speed port. It's all fine, everything worked, but there was a little problem that got really annoying and it's not just me and probably more than just the people who maybe didn't comment but felt the same uh, this one over here and this one over here that every time you change something in the cube configuration those settings that we applied in order for our board to act as a keyboard got reset and this is not good especially when you're developing or just changing one thing in the cube because that's what it's used for then you just have to change those USB parts all over again. Even if you're done with USB and working on other stuff, well, good luck. And then today I want to show you how to easily do it without those problems and have everything working no matter how many times you change the Cube MX and uh, no problems. And I'm also gonna update a few libraries. If we go to the link that I provide in every video to my GitHub link, you can see that these two files that I've provided, I have opened them over here. And these are the USB HID keyboard C and H files. This one just implements the uh, library that has all the USB uh, functionality, so sending and receiving data. And this one has the functions. I've provided a send character function and a send string, which is just repeating the keyboard send character over the whole string. I want to update this one because this, not, this one does not include numbers and it also doesn't include a bit more this uh, special character so I wanted to change it a little bit to be a bit more modular although this is just a simple explanation. Um, and also this is going to be working with the new library so I'm going to put a, a few defines in here as well. So let's go to our project and I'm going to show you how to do that. So over here I have my project which is working right now and because you're probably wanting a demonstration so you actually know what we're going to be building when I click the button oh well it recognizes it at multiple presses let's see one okay so it just writes I ate 10 potatoes but it just changed the T A and S with uh, special characters and uh, also I added a little bit of numbers so I could test my code for lower and upper la case letters and numbers and the special characters that I've implemented. So this is what this code will be doing. Uh, in this case I'm doing it with a button on the board triggering an interrupt which just, which just triggers that special function. So let me show you right that. Let's go straight to the point. I have a blank CPU over here, just the clock configured over here. So for the max 168 megahertz. And because I have enabled the USB peripheral, it's configured the PLL in such way that it's 48 megahertz for the USB clock. To do that, you just go into the connectivity and enable the USB OTG FS as a device only. And you can leave all this stock. Then to ease our coding, you use the middlewares for the USB device and instead of using the human interface device class, we're going to be using the custom human interface device class. It's from the first point of view, maybe you would want to use this one, but as I searched for the libraries and uh, looked at the forums online, people came to the conclusion that this one is more than a, a showcase of the library, more than the actual library to actually use and modify. So we're going to be using the custom human interface device class. Therefore, from the cube perspective and from the code, we're going to have to change a few things in order for the device to work. So for the first one, we have a few parameters over here. The device descriptor can be left unchanged, um, particularly because vendor IDs and product IDs are numbers that are given to the companies that actually buy them from the uh, foundation that actually define it. So this vendor ID is for all ST devices or for the ST company. And this PID is an internal number defining the, uh, the device of the ST. So this is a great way that computers find drivers. So you might not want to mess with this and also the strings for the device manufacturers like over here. 
but this one the product string i just modified to potato farm and i can confirm on windows it recognizes the device when it uh, when it's plugged in as a potato farm so it actually works the parameters is the one that i'm gonna be changing so all of these three can be changed but this thing can be left default so we have a custom hid fsb interval we have a usbd custom hid report port description size and we have usbd custom heat output buffer size so all of these uh, one, uh, these settings can be uh, familiar if you watch the previous video maybe not so the b interval so let's see how we can go to those i told you that there are two pdfs uh, that are provided by um, usb hid foundation and also a software so let's go first to this one so this is the hid kind of uh, the general one that is talking about the HID and on page 76 this is version 1.11 it's as an example for USB descriptors for HID devices okay so this is the descriptor so this is the the first part the device introduces to the computer and these are all the settings that are implemented inside the descriptor in a few different section and if you go a bit to the last part of the section we here have the b interval so this is the last interval so it says interval for polling endpoint of data transfer in milliseconds i'm not really that fluent in usb and i'm not really uh, an expert in this field so the best way is to use the sample value which is uh, x0a which is larger than uh, usual st settings which is x5 or x10 but i'm going to be using x 0 this is going to be a good one the next one is the report descriptor so this is the one that we have configured by using a special software provided by the hid from the usb foundation it ran on windows but it also runs on wine so if you have wine installed on your uh, linux then it will run in this software you just chose keyboard and it exported a uh, different like something like this the report descriptor so this is the whole descriptor of size 63 and if you uh, compare these values that that software generated to the values over here they're exactly the same except for one i think there's a one here that is, that is a three in the other but apart from that it's exactly the same and it's also the same size 63 so if you don't have the software or you don't find that software well you just can copy these numbers it might be tedious and it actually explains what certain numbers are but it works you can just copy these numbers from here uh, except for the end the collection and the next one that we want to uh, go see is in the other document which is the usage tables. So this is uh, the document that has all the different tables and explanations for implementing different key presses and actions with your HID devices. And if we go to the page 53 over here for the keyboard, we have all the different keyboard and key presses and key combinations to choose from. So you can see that the letters start from number four and go all up to over here number 29 and uh, different from ascii where you have lower and uppercase letters the uppercase are just combination of shift and a lowercase number so when doing an uppercase you're actually doing uh, modifying so using a uh, shift left or right shift and then using a small case number numbers are starting at number 30 and go through number 39 but in, uh, like in uh, unlike ASCII where it starts with 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4 on keyboard, if you look at your keyboard it starts at 1 and ends at 0 and it's exactly the same over here so you're going to have to make an exception to treat 0 specially and then others are just starting at 30 and just incrementing by 1 all the other special characters over here like enter which is 28 in hex or 14 decimal this is going to be used for new lines uh, tabs space bars over here uh, maybe semicolon uh, forward slash or oh this is backslash and forward slash over here dot comma so this can be also implemented so let's go into our actual software now that we have uh, described everything that we need to change and we will return to these settings over here 
or you can just plug in this number for the custom B interval for zero, uh, zero A in hex. So this is the one that we saw in the, uh, where is it? Document this one. So the B interval was this one. So the sample value that's provided is zero A and this seems to be work quite fine. So let's go into our settings and our actual code. So in terms of code in main, it's not much. It's just a toggling pin for uh, uh, with a period of two seconds. So one second on and one second off. And it's just blinking away. So I know that uh, nothing has crashed because in the testing I have crashed uh, this microcontroller. So the first thing that you have is the USB device full speed handle over here. So this handles and has all the states of the device. So this will be used in all your uh, functions using the USB HID keyboard library that I've modified and will provide the new version of it in the GitHub as well. So let's go open that one. First thing, there is a bit of a uh, tutorial in the beginning. So a little bit of explanation, what you have to do. So if you're just reading this library, so it's portable explanation. So I don't have to watch my video every time. And library is a little bit longer, but it's basically the same. Well, first thing first, in the header file, I have a definition over here to use the custom HID. If you just comment this one out, it will use the USB D HID library. So this is the first choice in the cube. But because we're using custom, it highlights this one and includes the USB D custom HID IF or interface. I also added a bit of modifiers so you can just use them on the fly. They're defined over here and those special uh, characters like space dot new line slash backslash comma, like uh, uh, exclamation point or at, they're a combination of shift and these letters over here and numbers. So those are gonna be special uh, numbers defined somewhere else. So the first thing is now this uh, file is the new one. So the uh, USB custom HID uh, is different than USB D custom HID without the extra is the special because in here is where it's defined the new report descriptor. So if you remember before the report descriptor was uh, alongside this one. So we had this uh, device descriptors over here, all three of them. And then after this one over here, we had the report descriptor for the mouse that we changed, but now we have it in this one over here. So it actually gets it from here. And well, you just take the report descriptor that your software uh, uh, spit it out without the, this one, the last one. So this is already implemented and you cannot change it or else it will overwrite it because user code is only here and C0 is universally. So it's just implemented after here. So all you need to do is implement these 62 characters either from that software or just from this one. So from the USB actual HID documentation. After done that, you have to change the USB D HID report size, which if you click on it is defined in USB D configuration dot H. But because you don't see any user code here, if you change this and you change something in the cube, it will just run over it. That's why we have, if we go back to cube, we have a setting for the custom HID report description size. So we just change it to match the actual report descriptor that we have, which is 63 long. And the custom HID output buffer size is just eight bytes because I think this is a good one because we are sending eight bytes. So it might, might as well have a buffer of that exact same size. And that is all for the cube. That is just why we had the back and forth between the cube and the code. So you just understand why we have to change this here because if we were to change this over here it would just run over with the default value in the cube so we have the report descriptor over here in between the user code begin zero we have our report descriptor and the output buffer size defined in the cube which means that every time you make a, you make a change in cube it doesn't affect these changes whereas before in the normal hid mode we had to reapply it over and over again. So this is it. So this is the configuration for your keyboard and it's easy as that. Now, how to use it? Well, we started with my new library over here and let's show you how it works. So this is a little bit of uh, 
tutorial in the beginning and next part is the same but now I have a special function to converting a character to the code or USB character. Uh, it's like ASCII but USB so we just saw this in the second documentation over here. So regarding letters, letters go from number 4 onwards and also um, ASCII letters go from uh, first letter of the alphabet to the last one. So we can correlate them and just calculate the difference between the uh, the USB uh, order and the ASCII order. So if we go back to the library. If it's a lowercase or uppercase, so firstly we, uh, we check if the character is a lowercase. If it's so, the modifier, which is the key press for the shifts and alts and controls, is zero because there's no modifier needed. And the actual character to be sent is an A, starting at A, which is a number four. So let's just op copy that one. So A starts over here. Let me zoom in. So A starts on number four. And then the difference between our character and the first ASCII value of A. So if we, our character is A, this difference is zero. So the number four gets printed or a small letter A. If B, B is larger than A, therefore this will be one. This will be five and five is keyboard press of B. If it's a large, uh, so a, a large letter, then the modifier, we have to use the left shift. In my case, I use left shift, but you could use the right shift. I just want to be consistent with my previous video. And exactly, everything is exactly the same. We just change the character now to a small character. So we just take the difference between a large character and a small character and subtract it from our character current. So a big A gets subtracted from small difference. And then this part is exactly the same as here. The addition that I, uh, uh, that I implemented is for numbers. So firstly, we check if our character is a number between 0 and 9. Because from ASCII, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But because in USB, if we go back, if you go down, you can see it starts at 1, as in decimal order goes 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for the keyboard 9 press and then 0 is on 39. So what I've done is just made an if the character is 0 then it just prints 39 which is hard 0 or else if it's uh, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 it just takes the first character which starts at 1 and subtracts the current character value from 1. So from 1, 2, 3, 4 onwards, it's just incrementing by 1. So this is the conversion from a USB or from character ASCII to a USB value. And then if it's none of those, let's check for special character like spaces over here. We check for a dot, new line, exclamation point, uh, question mark, at, and anything else that is not yet implemented. So at all that don't use the modifier, I'm just for the safety of it, setting it to zero. And then you can go to the tables and let's see, the space bar is 2C or 44. So 44. The dot, where is it? Um, over here, it's 55. So it's 55. And the new line is 40, is it? The 40, return, enter. Yes, it's 40. And then exclamation point, and question mark and add are combination of shift in case of English keyboard, it's shift two for the add, it's shift a slash for the exclamation and the, uh, or for the question mark and exclamation is shift uh, one. So we're using left modifier shift and number one, which starts at 30. And then for question mark is the modifier left shift and forward slash. And then for the add is left shift modifier number two, which is 31. Anything else, it's just zero, so nothing. And for as for the keyboard send character function, well, it just uses this one. We just convert the character and plugs the values into the uh, static global buffer over here. So it just uses the, uh, this function call. And then it just uses define again to uh, call the appropriate function, either the custom HID send report in our case right now, and the normal HID sent report, which would exist if the normal HID library would be used. But again, I advise against it, but if you want to be backwards compatible, 
this is one way with this but you can just delete this part over here if you want to the 50 milliseconds again i think this is the minimum um, because it didn't work if it had less than 50 milliseconds a few numbers were just uh, missing and a few characters were just gone so this is what i'm doing this the way and this function is the same as before now to show you the demonstration how it works well i'm using an interrupt on my external interrupt for my uh, button and it's on xt0 line i will make a future video on interrupt so you will better understand what's going on but anyway when interrupt gets called this function gets called and it handles the interrupt any hal uh, flags and then it's up to me what i want to do and in this case i'm called the usb keyboard send string and here's the string that i sent and don't forget to also include the let's go over here the usb hd keyboard h in the beginning for the user code begin includes so this is everything it does if you are doing exactly the same as me for this demonstration having that uh, part on the xt0 go into your nvic settings i'm gonna again explain later but in nvic you have all the interrupts and here you can see the xt line zero interrupt and I've just changed its priority to, to something in the middle of maximum, oops, six over here. That's because the USB has also an interrupt because every time the data comes in from the USB peripheral, uh, it, it has to create an interrupt in order to deal with the data fast enough. So it just deals with the data as the computer sends because if you remember from the previous video, I explained that USB just pings the devices are you there are you there are you there so it has to respond straight away so that's why it has an interrupt and it's really important to have the interrupt with the highest priority which is in this case the lowest number if we were to have the button at also priority zero it might preempt our actual uh, usb communication and which would mean it would crash and the devices i found out that my device would crash and the computer just lost the contact with the device and that's why you have to increment or the lower the status of the uh, any interrupt that you have so the usb just works so this is if you're doing it the same as me or just make a little if and reading the state of this button is the same so this is everything that i wanted to show you today so this is a simple way to implement the keyboard or any hid device you just have to know that you have to implement your custom report descriptor over here plug in the appropriate values in the actual usb device middlewares over here so your bind interval if you really uh, have to have it specific and especially the custom hd report size which has to be the same size as the actual report over here unless the uh, the debugger or the compiler actually will warn you that the size is not the same and that's it then you just use the appropriate function like uh, the send report to send your report it's eight bytes long and the uh, byte zero is for the uh, actual uh, modifier and the byte two is for the character and that's it that's everything you need to know so that's it for today thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye